Hey guys, how's it going? Almanix here. And today we're starting a new series on the YouTube channel, which is aimed at people who are looking to sh start live streaming from their PC. This series should hopefully contain videos that are short, to the point, and can help you guys get a good foothold on starting your streams from PC. I will primarily focus on streaming to Twitch using OBS. I will do videos in the future which focus on streaming direct from console to Twitch and YouTube and Mixer. In this video, I'm going to create a list of things that are essential and non-essential when it comes to streaming from PC. A lot of people have varying opinions on things that are essential and things that are not essential, but this list is going to be the bare minimum to allow you guys to say that you can or cannot stream from PC. The non-essentials half is going to contain things that I strongly suggest you consider when adding to your stream or implementing into your stream. So let's take a look at the list. Starting with the essentials list, we have right at the top, a decent PC. Now, yeah, you want to stream from PC. So having a PC that can handle a stream with the encoding and the processing and the uploading is essential. Absolutely essential to getting your own PC stream started. And also for this series, we will take uh, Open Broadcaster software, or as it will be referred to as OBS, and we'll have that installed on the machine as well. Second on the list is, of course, another obvious answer, is an internet connection. You can't stream or put content on the internet without an internet connection. Preferably, you have a decent internet connection that can handle uploading content. You obviously want to produce the best quality of stream that you can for people that want to watch so the faster your, your upload speed the better. An upload speed of anywhere around three to five thousand meg kilobits per second is probably good if you're just starting out as a PC stream and looking to have semi-decent content. Third on the list again another obvious answer is a Twitch account. A bare essential to streaming on Twitch is a Twitch account. And last but not least, on the essentials list, is some form of content. Now, if you're going to be streaming, you don't just want to sit there and be boring. You want to be playing a game that's exciting to you or that you're really into. It can be a story game, it can be a battle royale, it can be whatever you want it to be. Twitch nowadays has even expanded from just being gameplay streams. We now have the IRL category, we have food and drink, so that's people cooking, just chatting which is more of podcasts so if you're wanting to run a podcast and have it live and take answers or questions from viewers you can do that and for me personally that's it for the essentials list if you have a pc with obs internet connection twitch account and some form of content you can live stream that is that is it plain and simple the non-essentials list is going to include things that are a nice addition to the stream they are not a requirement to get your stream up and running but they are nice to have and things that you should consider adding to your stream to make your streams better for the people that are going to be watching. Right at the top of the list is a microphone. Now if you've been in any stream before you will know that Twitch chat enjoys talking to the streamer and having a microphone is the easiest way for a streamer to talk back to the Twitch chat without having to take breaks to type or respond in another way. Number two on the list is a webcam. Chat also enjoys seeing your reaction or you playing the game. So a nice addition to the stream is a webcam. They can see what you look like, get to know you more and feel a bit more involved in the community that you're going to be building. Third on the list, stream overlays. When I say stream overlays, I'm talking about a webcam border or even a simple alert that pops up on stream when somebody follows. These are nice to have as it provides a bit more interactiveness to the stream. If somebody was to follow, their name can pop up with a little animation. It lets you know that they followed and you can thank them. And last but not least on this list is a chat lot. I frequently go into a bunch of different streams just to see how they have things laid out, how their chatbot works, how their stream overlay is laid out, how their audio quality is, and 
a lot of the time you see different uses for the chat box. Some chats have games and interactive missions you can go on. And some use it simply for commands to get information. So you could do like exclamation mark discord and get the link to the discord server or exclamation mark twitter to get links to twitter. There are various uses for a chat box and it's really up to you how you decide that you want to use it if you want to use it. They are also very effective moderators when you're first starting out. So when you're playing a game, doesn't matter what you're playing, and somebody comes in spamming links or spamming capital letters and you don't want that in your chat, you can have the chatbot deal with that. There is an ever increasing list of things becoming available that you can add to your stream. There's an ever increasing list of things that you can add to your stream, uh, be it free or paid. And the things that I've listed here are things that I think you should focus on first before getting anything flashy or fancy and trying to be different. If you can get the basics down and get a good foothold in order to build your stream and build your community, that is the best way to do it. If you're going in spending lots of money on big expensive setups or fancy alert packages or overlays, then you're putting in money that you can't guarantee you're going to get back. So to start off with, I recommend you hold back, start simple and get to know the basics of OBS, the PC streaming and how the growth in your community is going before you start spending ridiculous amounts of money on big expensive setups. But that is really it. If you have the four things that are on the essentials list, you can start streaming. It's not difficult. It may be taxing on your computer, but the best thing you can do is try it. And if it doesn't work, you can adjust it. Feel free to ask me questions about it and I'll help you guys in any way I can. If you're not 100% sure and don't want to quite jump into it yet, I will have a video coming out soon which covers the basics of OBS and shows you guys how to get set up in order to use the program to start streaming. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or get in touch with me on some other social platforms. I will leave links in the description. But that's it. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, hit subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.